You got to eat, you got to sleep, you got to pray. This is uh, my mother. I get this advice, don't mix with wrong people, don't disturb anybody, don't argue with anyone. She still thinks I'm five year old. When you go back to Pakistan and you think, well, these people are different. They're more modern than we are. I believe in God. There's one God and, and, and I really just leave it at that. Well, my father got me into the business when I was five years old. I sort of started doing my first piece of selling when I was eight years old. I actually uh, opened up the shop without my parents' permission, by myself with my brother. And we just put open on the door and started getting customers in. And um, I was ecstatic because I sold, you know, something like four pair of socks. Elaine? Elaine, you know something? What? You know, we could have our meeting if you want. I was thinking that. Because I think it'd be a good idea. Pardon? It was quite hard work for me because it was mainly male-dominated and I found that really all the, the guys wanted to do was, you know, right. chat me up, really. But, you know, I got through it and I did it and it was fine. And really, I think that spending the money was important because once you got your checkbook out and started writing out the checks and stuff, they knew you were serious and... After a, a few months, few years, you know, I was, I was accepted. It's such a hot day today. All I can say is thank God for air conditioning in cars. Right, I need to check my uh, traffic. I don't see myself as mega spiritual. All I know is that I believe in God and I believe there is something spiritual around. My father just taught us good and bad, knew all about our religion, and, and basically said, there is one God, you do good in life, you don't hurt anybody, you know, and you'll, you'll go to heaven.
today, is it? <laughs> Half day today, is it? <laughs> That's uh, one of our employees. We always tease him, he's a nice person. Very straight he is. You know, you look at him and you think, oh, you know, like he's going past, let's just have a little say to him, see what happens. But we're with our employees, we're generally, it's more like a family team. We're not the bosses with them. We all sit down, we all have a laugh and a joke. <laughs> I don't like my you know. I mean, we started off at um, Newbridge, we bought a, an old car showroom and obviously went into the valleys and we thought, no, people were saying, wrong move, you're not going to do business there. And we said, well, no, we've done it now, we bought the property, we put all our commitments there and the four of us just started on our own. <laughs> Well, you've got to lie down to see well, you've got it. You've got to, you've got to see what company's all about. Oh, I do like that. Get on. Come on, put your feet up and let's have a look. This is how we make all our food in here. <laughs> in this house, there's two families. There's myself, my husband and my four children. Then it's my sister, Shamim, and her husband and their three children. So that's 11 of us in total. It is a big household, but it's a fun household. Well, it has to be spilled. <laughs> <laughs> We've always lived in Cardiff, and we'll always hope to stay in Cardiff. We love Cardiff. Cardiff is a lovely place. Culture is changing everywhere. It's changing here, it's changing in Pakistan. Uh, our parents who came over with that m mind at the time the events were happening at that time. But uh, they don't have, seem to move on. But when you go back to Pakistan and you think, wow, these people are different. They're more modern than we are. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Say so, hey, bye to your friends. Say so, hey, start from Bismillah. Auzubilla. Auzubilla. He mina shaita. Ni rajim. My biggest fear is that they're gonna go wander off the right path. Wander off the right path. Uh, drinking, drugs, smoking getting into all sorts of wrong companies. wrong companies and problems. But we're Muslims, it's our duty. We, we have to perform our Islamic duty. Our children must know about their religion, their background. Um, they have to learn the Quran. They have to learn their... hard to describe. Ahmed has been beaten and imprisoned for no reason. I have been sexually harassed. Our whole family have suffered years of persecution in the Turkish part of northern Cyprus. In Turkish laws, we didn't expect uh, who speaks the Kurdish. Because Turkish is a national language and you have to speak uh, Turkish. And you can't say that I'm Kurdish, you have to say I'm Turkish. And if you even say I am a Kurdish, that word even may cause you the persecution of you and they may take you to the prison because of one word, being a Kurdish. And they always threaten our family. And when they see my father, they just um, beat my father and because he couldn't speak proper Turkish. And he said he's Kurdish, he's religious, he's a Muslim person. He used to pray and he used to uh, do namaz five times a day. And when, when they saw my father doing namaz or speak Kurdish, they just beat him. He was an old guy, but they didn't care. It was like we are escaping from a 
war, like in the Second World War, all the Jewish people escaped. We felt like that we're es yeah. escaping from a massacre, and it doesn't matter if we lose our legs, if we lose our maybe fingers or whatever. But at the end of the day, we, we know that we are going to survive. Yeah. When I came to Waterloo, I didn't know it was Waterloo or somewhere. I know that it, it is England, but where we were, I didn't know that. University student there in uh, Eastern Mediterranean University. He was studying civic engineering and he had lots of troubles and he was beaten lots of times and just we couldn't stand it. My father decided to send us here and uh, because my older sister she was a refugee here as well and she didn't she wasn't beaten by anybody in this country. She said us it's a safe place come here. Unfortunately, now we have got some problems, some status problems in this country and you never know where is safe. Maybe they are going to send us back, but I, I, I would rather kill myself to go there. Then maybe they can send me somewhere else, but I don't want them to send me Cyprus or Turkey. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, sir. I get refused. It's my refuge letter. We noticed that they, they didn't even mention he came from Turkish part of Cyprus. They just sent us a standard letter because I know that this is a standard letter because I have translated for lots of Kurdish people. They receive same as exactly same letter. They just uh, change the name. And when you um, ask for asylum to another country, you think that they are going to really uh, investigate your case and uh, look in details, they will give you uh, importance as a human being because you came from a persecution, you came from harassment and everything. They just send your stunt that uh, it means that they don't really care about you as a human being. My Muslim name was actually given to me by the Raja of Mahmudabad, who at the time I decided to become Muslim was the director of the Islamic Cultural Centre in London. And, and he opened the Quran and he looked and he seemed a bit surprised and he closed it and opened it again. And then he smiled and he said, your name is Ahmed. The, the wudu is an outward purification but it has an inward effect. And when you do wudu, it prepares you for the prayer. Allah. Allah. Two down, three to go. <laughs> well, it's quite a new mosque, and also there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things going on. It's not just the five prayers. In fact, Amina and I were married there, so we, we were the first marriage there. So I always say that really we opened it um, <laughs> before Prince Charles did. <laughs> I'm a barrister. Lawyers, like doctors, are in a position to help people who are in trouble. So if you can help people to get out of tricky situations, then you've done something worthwhile. And when you're in English court, then it's the English court which is being applied. And although the Muslim witness may swear on the Quran or the Christian witness may 
swear on the Bible or the Jewish witness may swear on the Old Testament, you're not actually allowed to open them and say, this is what God says on the matter, let's follow that. I have this friend from Malaysia and uh, he used to say, you got to eat, you got to sleep, you got to pray. And, and you know, for him, the, the prayer was as natural as that. You know, it was as natural as brushing your teeth. But obviously, in, in terms of your relationship, then if you share everything together, including the prayer, then, then that brings you closer to each other. The things that I admire about Ahmed is that um, he gives everyone their due and uh, his time. He makes everybody feel important and, uh, and he manages to do that quite well. very close to Manchester Dogs Home. It's now a, a, a voluntary job. Uh, I come here, I give them advice. Uh, this dog, uh, when he came in, he had a, a touch of kennel cough and then unfortunately it developed uh, what we call pyometra, which is an infected womb. When I sold the practice, it was actually 30 years and a few months and I've been a vet 35 years. I qualified in December 1965. We've been married now since 1984. Yeah, 17 years now, yeah. Um, 17 years. We've worked together. So we worked together 16 years? Yes, I was Houston's practice manager whilst he had the practice here in Marple. I remember one lady coming, I don't know whether she came to the surgery or she rang. She wanted a visit. Um, her dog had been ill for several days. It wasn't a particular emergency, she just wanted a visit there and then, and of course Houston was very, very busy, uh, and said, no, no, you'll have to come to the surgery. But it's your Christian duty, she said, to come and see this dog. To which Houston's reply was, well, I'm very sorry, but I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim. Um, I don't think that went down terribly well. We've got two grandchildren. Grandson tends to be at school most of the day because he's going on eight. But uh, we have a young granddaughter who's just 13 months old. So she's a lot of fun. And Houston likes to spend time playing with her. You know, uh, and also, in my situation, I have more time for her. Uh, than I possibly had with my uh, with my children, unfortunately. I mean, I always said that because I was working uh, to begin with, especially when we just bought the practice uh, seven days a week. It is actually a sin to mistreat an animal. Uh, it's in the Quran that it says that uh, you mustn't mistreat uh, any animal. Well, it's been a long journey. I was born in. Cyprus, Turkish side of Cyprus, 63 years ago. I worked quite a long time, and this is sort of part of the retirement, but I have to think very carefully what I will do when I retire. Uh, I don't think I can completely let go of everything. Uh, somehow, dealing with animals must be in my blood, and I can never
is, is a nice city. I moved to Belfast in 97, so it has been 40 years now. Um, I know the city well. My wife likes the city very well. And um, we know some families. We are socializing well. Right, um, we, we have just finished the shopping and uh, Yusra seems to be very tired at the minute. We're going to the crash. Yusra goes to the crash every day in the morning from 9 to 5. She is doing well, playing with the kids and uh, she started talking at the minute and she started uh, demanding as well. Which one? Is it the top or the it's bottom? the top one. Top one. And is it the uh, Kamsangos or Coniston? I can't eat on that side of my toe. It's like a sharp pain. I was born in, in, in Sudan and um, I studied dentistry in Sudan. I was always ambitious and I wanted to specialize and uh, I decided in 1995 to come over and have more training in, in, in the UK. In the light of the Holy Quran and the Hadith, we find that a Muslim is always imbued with divine qualities. A true I always go to the, the mosque on, on Fridays for the Friday prayers. It's a very good chance to meet friends. Most of them are professional medical doctors. Part of them are students at the Queen's University. And the only chance to meet people is on Friday prayer. We meet for five or ten minutes and then everyone uh, go back to his business or his hospital or whatever. Uh, this is Amir. He is a close friend. He was, Hello. in fact, the Imam in just Friday. For today. Yeah. We're five just for today, we're six. Just for today, uh, uh, just two hours ago he was the Imam and, and now we are playing football together. And uh, he's a very close friend. Uh, he's Sudanese. His mom is Irish, but still he's one of us. <laughs> What I'm doing at the minute is hoping for a better future for myself because this means a better future for my child. I think um, uh, when you have a child, you will always be looking for future and I think I have I've done well so far. Uh, my mother, she looks out out of the window every week on Friday to see whether I've arrived and on Monday or Sunday night I get this advice that uh, don't mix with wrong people, don't disturb anybody, don't argue with anyone, behave yourself when you're out there and just ring me up when you get to London. So my mom looks after me, she still thinks I'm five year old. I, Nazir Lord Ahmed, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I'm from a working class background and I'm very proud of that. Um, I got involved with business uh, many, many years ago, uh, 23 years ago. And um, every little bit that we've done as a family, I look back and I think, well, that's a great achievement. You're at Rotherham Super Fry Fish and Chips. 23 years ago, we started frying fish and chips in a village called Sunnyside. Uh, about 15 or 16 years ago, we opened this shop in Rotherham Town Centre, near the bus station, near the market. And I used to fry fish and chips myself. It's great. I'm not a typical member of House of Lords. I'm very much peer of the people. I'm very much in touch with people very approachable. People have my telephone number. My mobile number gets printed in the newspapers. People ring me up. They want to talk to me about their own issues. Sometimes they just have ideas about certain problems. Then they'll say, well, I've got an idea about, 
you know, drugs in Bradford or the um, uh, problems that existed in Oldham. People have rang me up and said, Lord Emmett, could you raise it with government? Sometimes people ring me up or if they see me, they'll say, you know, next time you see Tony Blair, will you tell him this? And they don't realise that I don't speak with Tony Blair on sort of like on these type of issues, you know. But I do write in or I, if I see any of the Secretary of States, I talk to them. Okay. Now, everything is ready and uh, they should set off now. The, the, the bus is on its way. It will get to London, uh, inshallah, by 2 o'clock. And once it gets there, within 20 minutes, they should uh, put all the posters and the banners up and get the balloons out and have a big, big event in front of Parliament. message that we want to see peace in uh, South Asia but we want to see the right of self-determination for the Kashmiri people in accordance with UN resolutions. I'm Lord Nazir Ahmed. Lord Nazir Ahmed. I am one of the campaigners on the issue of right of self-determination for the Kashmir and also... As a British Muslim I feel that uh, this multi-religious, multi-ethnic society has a great contribution to make in the world because we have started this dialogue of civilizations here and that dialogue of civilizations and understanding of each other's religion and each other's belief can be extended to the rest of the world.